A Newman projection is another way of drawing a molecule. This is particularly good for showing different conformations of linear alkanes. In this case, we have dimethyl hexane. What we could do is the Newman projection is set to be oriented or down a carbon-carbon single bond. So if we were to look down this bond right here, if we we're going to look from the left, carbon-3 would kind of look like this. With carbon-3 right here, the ethyl group, carbons 2 and 1, right here and here, to our right is the methyl group. To our left, well, that's this hydrogen here that's a dash. Then we draw a circle den denoting this atom right here. And behind it is carbon-4. And we can't quite see carbon-4 because that's being eclipsed by carbon-3. But what we can see are the groups attached to carbon-4. For instance, if we look between this hydrogen and this methyl group, we see carbon-5. Carbon-5 is attached to carbon-6. This methyl group right here is between the hydrogen and the ethyl group. Hydrogen, ethyl group, like so. Also attached to carbon-4 is a hydrogen. Now, that's if we look down the 3-4 bond. If we were to look the opposite way, if we were to look up the 4-3 bond, what we can see is, well, there's carbon 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Again, here's carbon 4. 5 and 6 is here. To our right, it's going to be this methyl group here. To our left, it's going to be this hydrogen right here. And then if we, then we draw the circle. And then behind carbon-4, directly behind it, is carbon-3. What's anti to carbon-5 is carbon-2. 180 degree between 5, 4, 3, and 2 forms a single line. And so we see that here, 5, 4, 3, and then here's carbon-2. Carbon-1 is it's attached to carbon-2. Then over here, between the ethyl group and the hydrogen, we see this methyl group. Behind that methyl group, the dash here, this hydrogen, appears here. It's between the ethyl group and the methyl group. So we see that. So one important thing to remember is look left dash left or look right dash right basically in this top case we're looking from the left hand side and so our dashes are going to be on the left hand side this hydrogen this methyl group here and here they end up on the left hand side on the bottom one, we're looking from the right. So our dash groups here and here are on the right. Very important. Now, what's useful is using this to look at different conformations. If you were to rotate this 60 degrees, you would just rotate this bond here 60 degrees, you'd create a different conformation. In the Newman projection, you can really see these different conformations, and you can help evaluate their energies. 
if you take this and we rotate it 60 degrees, what we get, and when you rotate something 60 degrees, you hold one carbon the same. So I'm going to hold the first carbon the same, and then I'm going to rotate the back carbon. So the back carbon, this ethyl group 60 degrees, is going to go behind this methyl group right here. This hydrogen is going to go behind this ethyl group here. And this methyl group is going to go behind this hydrogen here. This is what's referred to, the first one is referred to as a staggered conformation. This is referred to as an eclipsed conformation. If we were to rate these in terms of energies, let's call this one A and this one B, A would have an energy like this. B is an eclipse conformation. There's some steric interactions here between when you're trying to force two things to be zero degrees on dihedral angle to each other. You start seeing some interaction between this methyl and an ethyl group. And so that's going to be higher in energy. But if you were to rotate this even slightly, the energy goes down. Staggered energies are always lower than eclipsed energies. Now, if we were to rotate this molecule another 60 degrees, again, we're going to hold the front carbon fixed, and we're going to rotate the back carbon. The ethyl group is going to go here and here. The hydrogens can go here. And the methyl group is going to go here. This is another staggered conformation. It's going to be lower in energy than B. Now, the question is, will it be lower in energy than A? Well, here A has, when it comes to interactions, you have a methyl ethyl gauche interaction. We have the two right next to each other, and then you have a methyl ethyl gauche interaction. Again, the two right next to each other. As opposed to this conformation right here, we have an ethyl ethyl gauche interaction and a methyl methyl gauche interaction. It's very difficult to tell which of these two is actually lower in energy. Methyl, ethyl, 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 methyl, methyl. And so they're probably close in energy to one another. Very close. And so we'll put that right here. If you rotate this 60 degrees again, you get another staggered conformation. So, excuse me, you get another eclipse conformation. So, here the two ethyl groups are lining up perfectly behind each other. Here we have the hydrogen lined up. Here we have the methyl group lining up. This is an eclipse conformation. I'm going to call this one D. Up here, the eclipse conformation B, we have a methyl behind an ethyl. That's the only really bad um, eclipse one you have. Here, this methyl is behind hydrogen. This ethyl behind this hydrogen. Here we have the methyl and the methyl hitting each other, and the ethyl and the ethyl hitting each other. So that's definitely going to be much higher in energy than B, so we'll make it about here. Again, rotate 60 degrees. This will give us a staggered conformation. 
all different carbon fixed. And so this ethyl group is going to go here. The hydrogen is going to go here. The methyl group is going to go here. This is staggered. So it's going to be lower than energy than in the Klipps conformation. We'll call this one E. Now this has an ethyl-ethyl gauche interaction here and here. This has a methyl-ethyl gauche interaction and a methyl-methyl gauche interaction. So we have three gauche interactions. That's definitely going to be higher in energy than A or C, though not as high as energy as an eclipse conformation. We go rotate 60 degrees again. So we'll keep the front carbon fixed. Then this ethyl group is going to go behind this hydrogen. The hydrogen is going to go behind this methyl group. And the methyl group is going to go behind the ethyl group. So this gives us F. And we find that it's another eclipsed confirmation. It's going to be lower in energy than D, because D we had two methyls and two ethyls together. Here we just have the methyl and the ethyl together. If we compared F to up here to B, we have a methyl and an ethyl, and a methyl and an ethyl. Methyl and hydrogen, methyl hydrogen, ethyl hydrogen, ethyl hydrogen. F and B dealing with same energy. Put that about here. And then if you rotate it 60 degrees again, you find we're back to A. And so if we were to write an energy diagram showing this, start off with A, rotate up to B, B then it's going to go down in energy to C, then we're going to go up in energy tremendously to D, and then we're going to go down in energy to get to E, up a bit to get to F, and then back down to A. And then A goes on to B, and so on and so forth. So this is sort of the energy diagram of the rotation of the 3-4 bond.